Welcome back to the new Professional StarCraft 2, and I'm very excited to introduce the player who I think will make the most use of some of the new changes. In the top right, it's the best Terran in Europe, the best outside Korea. The kid from Team Liquid. It's Clem. But on the other side, matching him as rank two of his race worldwide, just behind Hero, we have the best Protoss player outside of Korea. The mysterious Max Pax, the Twilight Toss. These two have gone back and forth. I don't know how many times. I can't count that high. I ran out of fingers and toes a while ago. But these two are considered the best micro players potentially in the entire world. They're so aggressive up in your face from the start of the game all the way through to the sometimes abrupt and I'm always excited to cast them, though I kind of struggle to keep up a little bit myself. But hopefully you can keep up with me begging you to like and subscribe. Thank you for tuning. Jimmy, what are we? At one, one, 1,148 likes. And I'll cast another series. And, well, there's a new opportunity to put new StarCraft II in the title. And you knew I was going to take advantage of it. So thank you for being here. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. Hopefully it's about to get a little bit better. I think uh, with both these players, literally second best. The best of the rest of their race. I think this is going to be the best indicator we've had so far of the new balance patch, of the new changes. We're going to go over a few. Oh my god. Well, nothing's going to stop Clem's Reapers from being incredibly annoying. He's going to get one probe. The Adept shaded away because he wants to put some pressure and get Scouty on the other side. We'll lose one pro, but that gets the Adept across so much quicker. Early game, Cyclone. Cyclone now out of a reactor or no tech lab at all. Uh, much more fragile. Still very high DPS. A good all-around kind of defensive unit. Though, honestly, Protoss with Blink Stalkers have found enough ways to be able to deal with it. Reapers, no change. Still very annoying. Uh... And uh, some big changes for Protoss. The Disruptor now costs four supply instead of three. Not so relevant uh, in the early game, but part of those late game compositions makes it a little harder to fill in the rest of the composition. Uh, the Mothership is now no longer energy based. The Immortal um, can block shield damage with its barrier. It no longer gets wiped out by EMP. So the Immortal a little bit better against Ghost. Speaking of which, EMP radius has been reduced from 1.75 in ranges, whatever size those are, to 1.5. So pretty significant nerf there uh, to the ghost itself. One last thing. I don't want to feel like I'm, I'm checking off bullet points here, but it looks to be a relatively standard opener. Um, even before this new patch, the Cyclone was still a pretty staple part of the early game composition, just as a good kind of like uh, catch-all sniper unit. And now it's uh, kind of the same thing, just cheaper and a little worse at it individually. Um, but the Raven no longer starts with Interference Matrix, but instead um, it is a relatively cheap and quick upgrade, like Concussive Shells. Almost, I think it actually is the same time as Concussive Shells, but on the uh, Starport Tech Lab. So that delays potentially Interference Matrix a little. Not a huge deal, to be honest, in my opinion, but it is a nerf to the Raven. And that, I think, covers most of the early game. Oh, yeah, Sentry Guardian Shield is like a second and a half longer, which is kind of hilarious. Raven on the way. Mine drop. I assume it's a mine drop. I don't know for sure. To okay, two mines in there. <laughs> I see a medevac coming out. Honestly, there could be nothing in there, and it would still be pretty scary as the threat of a Widow Mine drop. Oh, Widow Mines got buffed, though only after they get the Drilling Claws upgrade. They unburrow a little more quickly. As you know, what people were clamoring for was a buff to the Widowmine. Like and subscribe if you disagree. Uh, Robo Bay, on the way. Yeah, a lot of little changes. I hopefully, Jimmy, did put it in the description. The, my breakdown of the patch changes and uh, my, what I think the implications will be. But we're here to see what these two have come up with so far. And I don't expect too much of a change in the early game. We see the Blink Stalkers for defense into Robo Bay. I imagine two or three Colossi. Ooh, missed a Stalker, but that Warp Prism is there. A single tank. Gonna poke and prod at the Marines, but already taking some hold damage on the Stalkers makes it not very worth it. 
Ooh, great blink, but the Widow Mines will burrow probe. Uh, it's a couple hits. Micro's away. Well, Clem does lose the medevac in both mines, so three probes, minimal mining time lost. I think that's about as good as it gets uh, in this scenario. Observer going to spot a very standard three rags play. Now, the, the changes to the Cyclone. Uh, we're supposed to maybe make Mech a little bit more popular, but Clem makes uh, Marine Marauders medevac some... <laughs> I don't think he's gonna stop going for that bio army anytime soon. All right, Cyclone. Oh, so it takes however many stalkers that was plus one to one shot it. Uh, unfortunate for Max Bags there. Not able to get it. But not a huge deal either way because behind this, Max Bags is actually macroing up. Uh, he's maxing his, his planning capabilities and paxing his stalkers into the prism in order to keep Clem busy, because until he gets two medevacs, until he gets the triple threat, until he gets stim combat shield and plus one infantry weapons, he's not going to be moving out on the map. But once he gets all those, it's essentially like slapping brass knuckles and shooting your fist into the face of the gateway unit. Uh, it's quite an upgrade. So, that is a significant... I'd put it like five times as effective. No, not exaggerating. Once those three upgrades finish compared to your stock standard, like out of the fresh out of the barracks marine marauder uh the synergy on those units is absolutely unparalleled a scan uh, i think mag Pax already knows there's a third he's looking to see if there's a fourth he's gonna set himself up to well he's angling towards the third so he knows mag Pax. Uh, he's not missing anything here so he should have a lot of units did he get interference matrix he did get a raven i'm not sure that raven ended up he did not upgrade Interference Matrix. I don't see the Raven with the army here. The two Colossi on the high ground. Extended Thermal Lance, I believe, was Chrono boosted out. So Max Pax keeps him at bay for now. But the Siege Tanks on the low ground. That little cliff face there, gonna make things difficult. There's a single shield battery. Good force fields locking a few of the units. Extended Thermal Lances just burning through the Marine and the countryside. Very important to burninate that whenever possible. But the back, oh, there's the Raven. The stalkers do their little dance, making sure that the, trying to ward away the, the raven and also bring the rain. Well, the, the siege tank was isolated. Shield battery overcharged Max Pax with a pretty surgical dismantling of this push. The Colossi not great against siege tanks, but with the battery overcharge at the back. Widowmind does take out one zealot on the way, but Clem is driven back by Max Pax is capable. And well put together defense. I think not taking the fourth Nexus was a big part of that. The fact that Max Pax was able to up his production and really punch out those, uh, especially Colossi in time, against the Vikingless army. All right, as a Dane, he knows how dangerous the Vikings can be, so try to maximize as much damage as you can before. But here comes Clem. A Widow Mine drop into the third. Max Pax, he reacts quickly just in time to get away but that is going to be well, he's actually going to just split off some of this max pack's trying to do damage on the other side widow mines will cut into the zealots and oh another zealot is sacrificed but into the natural now clem not paying attention because the fight is happening on the other side max pack but the widow mines will manage to burrow here is he going to retard i think he's on the other oh he gets the probe seven of them and the armory is not done, so that should be cleaned up, but Max Pax did just eat quite a hit. Clem is stuck on the top of his ramp. The force field definitely good so far. He's using the W there, the speed zone. Doesn't give you attack speed, but allows you to maneuver. It's about 30, 35% quicker. Uh, I believe it's 35, but I'm not 100% on that. So, uh, allows those units to kind of dip back and forth, and very importantly, allows air units to maneuver quicker which can definitely have some knock-on effects as time goes on. All right, the Marauder count is damn He's got 21 Marauders, as 30 Marines have been mostly roasted throughout this. The Vikings kind of getting out ahead of everything. Got to be a little careful when those Ws are involved. Their cousin, the Slow Zone, the Bubula, of course, uh, as you know. I don't think we have any maps with Bubulas this go-around. Instead, speeding things up a bit. A Dark Templar into the mix, but the Marauders stimmed 
through the speed zone here for Colossi trying to zone out. A DT into the main. Clem? Oh, I think there's a DT at the natural as well. But Max Packs keeping Clem busy. What do we got on the other side? Looks like some Marines cleaned up. Confirms the fourth base. Whittle mind though. Eat blunt the force of the front line. He actually kills his own stalker to kill the Whittle mine, which, you know, is kind of doing the mine's work for it. But he, he burns through one of them with a Colossus just to kill the mine, which is um, quite a sacrifice. The Colossi almost trying to get up on top of this like crypt area. This map is beautiful, by the way. Uh, Solaris. I, I am a big fan of about seven of the maps in the new map pool. Two of them look very off um, when it comes to the lighting. I'll let you know if uh, we get to any of them. Or maybe I won't, and I'll see if you notice, because then maybe I'm just crazy and I have bad eyes. That's possible. Uh. But Max Pax has kept Clem at bay. Clem is maxed out. He's got 2-2, two, two, nearly finished up, and really at this point there's nowhere left to go but the other side of the map. Maxpex has done a good job of keeping Clem from, from whittling down his economy too much, but he's still struggling to field a full army here. As Clem now, his bio ball, he's got 127 army supply. Very notably, no disruptors out of Maxpex, who has already in his one of his very rare interviews commented that the nerf to the disruptor is quite severe and it's already hard enough to fight the terran army with a maxed out protoss one of course we're talking about clem's terran army not you my diamond friend um someone who can control ghosts bio and vikings without losing two-thirds of them before the fight even starts but here we go i believe there was one disruptor in the army yes just one danger ball of course, one can be enough. Against Clem, it's relatively rare, but down goes a Nexus. Disruptor shot, goes fishing, comes up with nothing. All right, now, oh, Colossi kind of wandering. There's a lot of weird cliffs here that the Colossi seem to be stepping over. Um, if they could actually use them against him. There's the fusion core, but, oh, oh, one more thing we may have to mention. Caduceus reactor. Medivac Energy Regen Upgrade has replaced the Medivac Speed Upgrade. Um, not because the Medivac Speed Upgrade was particularly bad, but um, I guess we're just changing it up. I, I'm not actually sure why the Medivac Speed Upgrade was not more, more popular, but... All right, EMP. Doesn't catch enough of the sentries to prevent a Guardian Shield here. One Colossus gets sniped up by the Vikings over the top. There are enough ghosts. There's almost no marine. 27 marauders. Five ghosts. Eight vikings. The Protoss army is maxed out. He's got four immortals in there as well. The disruptor shot actually catches some of the marauders on the edge of the W there. The vikings are microing back. Shield battery overcharge doing what it can. What it can is not enough. Meanwhile, back... The back of the bay, 60 T's, a couple charge lots being warped in to undercut maybe some of the upgrades, but EMP hits most of the DTs. A scan as well, but there's so many of them, they're able to blink on top, and Magpack's trying to catch the army. EMP's wash across. Barrier not enough to stop it. Colossi taking the wrong path and knocked down a detour they didn't ask for. But actually, Clem looking the other way, he's dealing with everything back at home. And Maxpex is su successfully sowing enough chaos here that he's able to drive Clem away, and for the very first time, he takes the supply lead. Even the engineering base, this warp prism warping in about as, as much of the Protoss army from Iron as he's able to get, does seem like uh, potentially the knife in Clem's back that will make it that much harder for him to fight on the field. A planetary fortress, though. Clem's got to stop the bleeding back at home. The orbital command itself, the engineering bay, plus three weapons. Even stalkers warped in to help deal with the liberators. Max Pax, his full force here. But it looks like it will eventually get cleaned up. But Clem has taken some big hits. A uh, widow mine actually, uh, I believe, dented a colossus there on that left flank. That widow mine has been doing good work, but its work has finally ended. Overall, Max Pax. He's made progress here. Disruptor shot. Clips a couple ghosts. 
And uh, that's probably the most valuable two units he could pick off here, if he had to decide. And come on, give us that medevac upgrade, Clem. Those medevacs out of energy here. Uh, continually healing through those stims, but Liberators do have advanced ballistics. The Vikings sniping off an Observer. Widow Mines from the north side. EMP. Colossus crumbles. Disruptor shot out. Pops one. Pops two. Another shot hits him in the back. Oh, that Disruptor was flung out a little too early. Vikings on deck, but the Terran army getting overwhelmed. Not even all the Vikings end up landing here. The Medivax entirely out of energy. The Immortals holding strong. Max Packs reinforcing. Liberators will siege up and cover the retreat, but Clem is only barely holding on as Max Packs has limited no one base to mining. That that sentence came together weirdly, but Max Packs now has about three bases full of mining. Whereas Clem is down to just one. Of course those command centers can can float on over, look for more, but now Max Packs has him on the ropes. Clem not able to whittle down Max Pax's economy, and he doesn't seem to have the army to fight outright on the field. The Immortals being added in. Those little details adding up. Oof. Widowmine takes another chunk. Those Widowmines. Unfortunately, the Observers were taken out almost incidentally. Oh no! Advanced Ballistics Liberators. Thankfully sieged up a, a little too close there. But... He's gonna get several stalkers, but very thankfully he, he's able to pick off that Liberator because I don't believe there is a Stargate. Disruptor flies through, slingshots through the Dubula and gets a little extra range. It also affects the Purification Nova, incredibly importantly. Max Pax trying to lay down the killing blow here. Another Ruptor shot turned. A scan, Clem. Still struggling to really get out of his own base. He was able to slip a few Liberators away. Ship weapons level 2 now done. Which means that the Liberators are able to two-shot Stalkers. Usually three. Or one shot after EMP. It's a massive damage upgrade if you're actually able to siege up the Libs. In which case, well, it does a lot better. But some EMPs. Disruptor shot. Dangerous to both sides. Clem wanders forward and is pushed back immediately, losing another dozen or so supply. He just can't get out of the base. Max Pax has a contain here. Mass Liberator is the choice, but Max Pax might be able to just beat him down with superior forces. And almost maxed out. Disruptors, but that, that set of rocks, a bit of an awkward orbit. Hello, ever. That, I, mm, all right, <laughs> that happened. Clem's army supply is at 115, so it's competitive. He never got plus three because of the war prism in the back. Did he ever get to Caduceus Reactor? No, which is uh, immensely disappointing to me, by the way. I'm not going to be able to clickbait that one. But the Liberator's looking for a siege. Clem's got one more good fight here as he's losing his economy on both sides. The Liberators will siege up. Some Stalkers underneath, but the Bio Army gonna make things difficult. Disruptor shot zoning out. Clem isn't really mining right now. A few DTs are coming in. The Liberator's on the chase. Another Ruptor. He splits. Doesn't find much there. Max Pass getting chased down. 40 SCVs. The Bio Army still more than enough to clear out the gateway units here. Clem is down to less SCVs than he started with. More disruptors in production. Ground armor level three. The stalkers, well, it's going to be spotted here. He's diving back into the main. I'm not entirely sure why he decided picking up was the option, but Clem in no man's land purgatory and dies for it. Max Pax is able to beat Clem back in game one, and I'm not gonna pretend it was particularly easy or convincing, but a victory for the European Protoss. He's able to wield just enough of those robots. I think the Immortals. Um, a bit of a surprisingly solid choice. Clem ends up with so many Marauders that the Immortals actually just almost always have a good target. So I think mixing in those extra Immortals instead of relying on, on inherently unreliable splash damage is what got Max Pax over that stage of the game where Clem is so mobile out on the field and allowed him to, to just choke out that and, you know, warping in like 30 zealots to the main. That also helped. 
So, game. Yeah. Game two. Sight Delta. All right, we've gone through Alpha, Bravo, Cincinnati, and now Delta. All right. Well, I'm though not able to compete. In the, I'm still mad about. I'm st okay. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed that he didn't get Caduceus Reactor for the Metavex. Would it have mattered? I don't know. But I wanted to see it. So. I don't know if I described what it does, but it doubles the energy regen of Metavax, allowing them... It does not allow them to heal twice as fast. It just gives them more uh, healing overall, because if you regen energy faster, you heal more, um, because you're not out of energy. I don't need to explain. That's basic math. All right? That, that makes sense. Probably being annoying. He's actually building a zealot. It looks like uh, that is very much. Yeah, he's gonna sneak a zealot out here. Here, just gonna try to slip by. I don't think he wants to fight the Reaper with it, obviously. That is a losing battle for the brave but melee ranged Protoss warrior. But instead. Whoa, the clem. Didn't quite spot it, which I'm sure is mapped out by Max Max. Adept on the chase. Gonna try to get a second hit, but not quite enough. Glenn gets away with the Reaper. Adept headed across, and now the Zealot. Makes its way in towards... Oh my god, the bunker doesn't finish! The SCV decides that's probably more important. I think he's right. And now, Clem gets to micro with a bunker. I've never seen anyone bunker micro quite like Clem. Okay, it, it loses the SCV. He's gonna try to finish the CC. Marine. Whoa! Okay, well, this he's not nailing it here. He still has the Reaper, though, which is a big part of finding success. Pops. Well, wait, what? What am I wa- What? Oh, come on, man. It, that, I, that, that SCV. Oh, no. God, this should be illegal. Okay, well, murder. I mean, execution. <sighs> that Reaper doing un- Technically, very technically outranges the Adept. But practically not so much. The Cyclone clearly um, doesn't have any issues there. But he en ends up finishing the command center, and it costs two Adepts and a Zealot. So, and there's already Blink on the way, but a Cyclone out, Medivac in production here. Mm. I don't think it was worth it for Max Max. With that zealot, you're really looking to delay as long as... But I think the bunker finishing really made things more difficult. It wasn't going to be the end of the world. Once the cyclone came out, that was going to be the end of that. But that would have meant Max Pax could delay the commands in another 30, 40 seconds or so. And, uh... Well, he just didn't quite get there. Here comes the mind drop. Sticking with it here in game two. Max Pax dealt with it just fine in the previous match. Went about as poorly as it could. He lost the medevac and both the mines for minimal probe damage. But this time, well, he's got the spy line here, the spotter pylon, which doesn't have quite as much vision range. Oh, the mine drop, but the probe, like, Clem is trying to... <laughs> so, I, did Max Pack see it? I'm pretty... Did he actually manage to navigate the thread of area that he didn't have vision. I believe he did. Oh no. Oh no, that stalker! Oh, there's one more. But wait, there's more. Max Pax reacts immediately. It's gonna prairie dog the mine a bit. Max Pax goes for it, but there's already. Alright. Oh, the mines. Yeah, there's already a bunker ready. Five probes down. Five? I guess at the natural, you got a few more. The Blink Stalkers, this is essentially a two-base all-in. I don't know if that was... He built four gates before a third base. So I think he was intending on getting some real damage done here, but... 
Max Pex. Well, there's no siege tank, so we can start kind of juggling the stalkers back, but two bunkers make things a lot more difficult. Whoa. He loses one. He's looking on the other side. There's a widow, the widow mine coming back in, but the threat of the widow mine is, is keeping him very busy. A bit of a bulwark here. I think somewhat intentionally designed to stop the blink stalkers, though that's a very exposed tech lab. The tank blocks on the tank. Max packs so decisive, but there's another tank on the high ground. But wait, there's more. Mine drop coming in again. Three more probes. I can't believe it got it. Come on. Get it. Get it. Oh my god. Gets the medevac. But at what cost? Max Pex is only at 40 probes against a... He hasn't done enough damage. It is not like last game where he had a better economy to fall back on, or at least a third base. No, Clem is getting his third CC at the same time as Max Pex is uh, getting his third Nexus. The Cyclone? Vulnerable, very much so. You know what? These four stalkers getting more done than all the stalkers at the front. Very clean Blink Stalker Micro picks off five SCVs, gets, a, uh, gets the clone, gets a couple Marines, and he gets out. Still, is that enough? Well, the Blink Stalkers come in. They're going for the tech labs. He may eat the tank hits. If he can snipe both Stim and Combat Shield, that is huge! And even gets a reactor for his troubles. Ghetto Blinking back. Gonna lose one. Uh, how many Stalkers in total? He's lost 10 star. Ooh. But, an auto turret will keep things busy. Clem comes in for another pass. Another set. He's actually shift-clicked onto the probes there. The Raven going to continue working on his economy, but the tech has been reset. I talked about how important those bio upgrades are. I was not exaggerating. It is so much easier to deal with with the Stalkers. And I think Max Pack's trying to demonstrate now. I think Clem ran out of minerals for a moment. So the SCV stopped repairing for a second. That, or he was manually repairing and didn't have it on auto, which is, you know, probably more likely. Here comes the bio army. No stim, no combat shield. The blink stalker should be able to kite it back. There is a medevac to help out. But, yeah, uh, even... Well, the stim won't hurt the, the units anymore, but he's not going to be able to chase down stalkers. Medivacs got their work cut out for him. Max Pack's keeping him so busy. He's dancing around, blinking over the top, looking for more SCVs. He's trying to kill Clem's momentum. He knows that bio army is coming, but he's got a Colossus in production. He can... Oh, there's another mine drop headed in. As Clem just poking and prodding. Auto turret, but this is to distract him. Yeah, and then the mine drop comes in. Max Pack's not looking. He's not looking! Oh no, 11 probes! He's busy microing his blink stalkers and now he's losing them! And just like that, any momentum or any damage that Max Pax really did on the other side, undercut by the mines. You can't, it doesn't matter how many mine drops you stop. If one gets through, that might be enough. Max Pax is set up with the war prism, but the supply gap now. 150 to 110. 13 worker advantage for Clem. Blink Stalkers come in for something resembling a base trade. And that might be best case scenario. If he could throw this game into full-on chaos, then maybe with some Colossi at home, Max Pax can turn it around. Widow Mine's actually hitting ju- Oh, SCVs don't die to the splash damage of a Widow Mine because, because that's how it is. Meanwhile, the Terran Army. Oh, there was a Colossus there, no longer. There's a, um, how did you get here? The natural is pretty much gone. The main base, he could recall, but I don't know if he has anything left. It looks like the Blink Stalker is trying to come back, eating a couple mines on the way. The terror, he's just tearing apart everything before they get here. Extended thermal lance is done. Where, where did that Col the Colossus is wandering back? I think he rallied it out into the prism, but. And, well, picks up the bio army, gets away with all the medevacs. And Max Pax has been outright gutted. I, this is one of those you kind of like take a second, you're like, oh, 
Oh, it's really bad. Have I got a, I, a little bit of credit, I think, to Maxpex for not tapping out, but I would not have blamed him because, yeah. He might not even realize how much supply Clem still has because a lot of it was still kind of sitting in the reinforcement. He was just waiting. Clem. That was only half his army. Uh, well, this one not going as well for Max Pax. There's one Colossus. He, he picks off a couple medevacs on the way over. Is he gonna recall? Uh, G. Clem claims game two. And uh, with a vengeance, that was indeed uh, a bit. That was quite a decisive victory there. Max Pax not able to get enough. He read them like a book. All right. He knew the blinks. Like building two bunkers means you know he's going all in. You don't think it's going to be maybe a third, maybe no. Two bunkers right off the bat, and Max Pax eventually got through them. So those two bunkers were certainly justified. But, yeah, the Blank Stalker is just coming up. It's, it's a fine line to walk, I think. Oh, with them. Give, give me. Where, I, I don't think Blank Stalkers are, are still a major threat to killing the Terran, but they're definitely a counter to Cyclones. But if you invest too much in the Blank Stalkers, eventually... Eventually, uh, the bill comes due. Is this an NG Bay block? I believe it is, yeah. That timing. It's not a proxy rex, but the cheeky beaky NG Bay block. And we're on Ocean Morn. Which, I mean, come on. We got a new ocean map. Oh my god. He knows the probe scout. Oh my god. It's perfect. He knows exactly. That probe scout usually coming out off. The gateway? Or maybe even a little later. Um, like, when you get so good, people question if you have map hacks. No, he just knows the timing. And if Max Pack scouted a little earlier, well, he wouldn't have seen the SCV. He scouted a little late. Where are you going now? Oh my god, he wants to double block. Just in case Max Pax thought about taking the third. Oh, you filthy, filthy Terran. Oh my, but I repeat myself. I, he's trying to block the third, but Max Pax takes the other one. Well, that is certainly a black. Oh. He's trying to block the probe out. The Marine almost comes out, but Max Pax... Oh. Yeah, Clem decides not to show him the Marine if he doesn't need to. Still kind of that question mark of whether or not it's going to be a Reaper. So, Max Pax takes the third. Does Clem... Yeah, Clem spotted it with the SUV. He canceled the engineering bay as well. Important to point out. Got that money back. At least 25% restocking fee is how it works. Stargate. For the first time, Max Pax breaks it out. And here we double cyclone against Stargate. Reactor clones. I'll see if Max Pax is ready for the attack of them. Right, what do you build out of the Stargate? Because nothing trades great with the clones. He has to, well, he doesn't know for sure. I think he's about to. Double locks. The adept trying to shade away does do so. Very important that he knows those are clones. Because it could be Hellions, it could be Whittle Mines. We might see both of those by the time this is all said and done. But it's going to be Clones first into Hellions. There's an Oracle on the way. An Oracle can beat one Cyclone. It can chase it down and burn through it before the Cyclone kills it. But it can't beat two, especially if they're micro. Important to note. Well, the Cyclones dancing. Hellions, ooh, to back him up. Does he have energy for overcharge? Here comes the Oracle. Locks on to it. Uh, 
Well, that's certainly not ideal. Uh, Max Packs currently has no units. So, it looks like Stargate, not it. Not it. All right. Well, that puts Clem on match point quite abruptly. In a fraction of the time that game one took, we're now going to game four. So, hard lead and a hard lead for Clem and D. Here we go. My expects. Yeah, I mean. That's one of those, like. I don't think the Stargate is necessarily the wrong call. It, what is the right call? That is the first game I've seen on the new patch that I'm like. It feels like gambling for Protoss. I know a lot of Protoss feels like gambling, but it truly feels like. Does he, it, do you just take your, try to take your natural? Clem made a big effort on that NG Bay, but like, it feels like there's no good answers. That is the first game I've seen where I'm truly racking my brain like, it, eh, the NG Bay block seems like a very good call. Like, Yeah, well, Cyclones, even though they're not as strong individually, their ability, well, just being able to get a reactor. I think I, I spoke on this in my, um, my patch coverage is why you can go check that out. Once again, in the description, Jimmy, um, it's not so much about the strength individually of the Cyclones. It's about the fact that there's another kind of option from the reactor factory that does not have a very um, uh, consistent response. Like, if it's two Cyclones, you want Blink Stalkers. If it's two Widow Mines, you might want the Stargate to be able to take down the Metavac. If it's Hellions, an Oracle's fine. Like, uh, but if it's any or all, it becomes a lot harder to directly respond to it without... And that was with Max Pax seeing the Cyclones. He still didn't know for sure it was clones until that moment. And if he hadn't gotten that info, then, well, I mean, you can't get two phoenixes in the time you can get two cyclones. And even if you do get two feet, what are you going to do? Lift both of them? <laughs> uh, you no longer can break the lock because the lock on doesn't have a cooldown. Um, it used to be kind of like the phoenix would break the lock on the cyclone, rendering it less effective for a while, but now it's just essentially an auto attack. I'm not in love with it, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't think, my, well, obviously the Oracle didn't work out, but that did look very rough. If you're on the ladder, if you're a filthy Terran like I am at least a third of the time, a little more often lately, I'll be honest. That was uh, quite a build to follow. Though the execution, very important, but it didn't seem particularly difficult to follow, and uh, I think you can take that one and steal away a few ladder points from the few protiles left on the ladder. Cyclone. Chasing down the other adept trying to body block for its friend. Kind of? Well, didn't really succeed. It is going to be blank. Max Pax, we've seen it multiple times now. Attempted the Stargate game. Didn't work out. Very much didn't work out. So we're back to blank. All right, and the Adepts chasing, well, the Hellion was the follow-up, the scouting Hellion. But I think he saw enough. He saw the Robo. He saw the Robo. The timing of the Robo almost certainly gives away Blink. As uh, he clearly isn't Robo first. And, well, did he, did he even SCB see, ready. yeah, he saw the gases as well, just to, to seal the deal there. Not that you'd be... Well, he's downgraded. Like I said, 
This is also what I've... Clem's been watching my ladder games. Um, I've downgraded to a single widow mine in the drop. You don't even have to use, like, just the threat of a widow mine. You just show it once. If they seem prepared for it, you show it once, and then you just sit in the corner. And they're pretty much obligated to keep, like, three stalkers back at home. Because they don't know how many widow mines are in that meta bag. Could be four, could be one, technically could be none after a certain way. <laughs> he just goes right over. Blink is done. And Clem, mm, taking notes, I see. It's spotted, but Clem, now those stalkers have to stay at home. Or he risks the mine drop coming in. He's just anchored four stalkers back there. Which is enough to take out the mine before it burrows and fires, if you react quickly enough. Four stalkers warp down the other side. The tank, though, in position. The cyclone, no interference matrix, but... Yeah, and don't come back. I think he poked in again. Here's a, here's some psychological warfare for you. Some Minecraft plays. I've started just leaving the medevac. You just never move it. Don't even think, like, until way later in the game, maybe you're desperate. Good habit not to use select all army, by the way. But just, just leave it. All right. Stalkers cost twice as much as a medevac. You keep one stalker at home, that's cost effectiveness right there. Not as me not a medevac, a, a widow mine that is. The blame stalker is trying to get some progress here. And realistically, they'll leave at least two. So that'll definitely be worth it. Oh, Clem. I see you enjoy the stream. I bet Clem was doing this beforehand. All right. I, th I don't think I'm the first person to come up with the one widow mine and a medevac idea. Clem just loses his command center outright. Well, that was the biggest loss of the game. Quite an unforced error. Clem just loses his command center. That's 400 minerals down. No cancel. Um, yeah, we're going to keep coming back to it, I guess. Which is kind of how Max Max has to play as well. Yeah, just never, never do it. Just leave it. There it is. You gonna build a Stargate? <laughs> Extended Thermal Lance is on the way. I will say, like, losing that command center is big. Max Max has lost not a single unit. I've, I've been over here harping about the psychological damage a Widowmine drop that doesn't even drop can do. Max Max has played perfect. He has not lost a single Stalker. Not lost a single probe. He's very close to making that statement untrue. Oh my god, he's still perfect. But here comes Clem. It's very likely at least something will be lost by the end of this. Extended Thermal Lance and Charge are on the way. The timing is good. He didn't upgrade Interference Matrix. So this, uh, it doesn't have the ability to disable those Colossi. Bit of a mistake, maybe, out of Clem? I mean, it still has detection, but almost snipes off the Raven. Yeah, some of the charge lots getting stuck. He slaps down a couple turrets, which definitely not the ideal Raven usage there. Max Pack still pinned up against it. Oh, picks up a few. Almost snipes off the medevac at the Widow Mine and the Siege Tanks. Will return fire. And finally, the Mine Drop comes in. I've waited 84 years. He looks away. The Mine Hit depowers the Robo. And Clem, just like that, has Max Packs on the ropes. All right, Blunks forward. But a Widow Mine on the back line just obliterates the Stalkers. The Colossi! They might not be interference matrix, but they're definitely going to be shut down. There's almost nothing left or just Clem with a well-executed biotank push. Even the Cyclone in on the action. Down goes one, stutter stepping forward. Oh, the Warp Prism, a panic F2 over the top. The Marauder still. Almost no HP, but no energy on the battery. Down goes the Colossus. He's juggling. He's uh, he's just juking and jiving into the Metavax. So that Robo, you got to decide. Do you want detection? Or does he have an Observer? I believe he does. Well, the Marauders, uh, he's going to eat some more hits from the mines. Clem is sending reinforcements across. It's not quite over yet, but it just feels like the, once, once this army kind of gets entrenched, and the Colossi start crumbling. It's so hard to ever regain momentum, especially since the Warp Prism died. 
The one potential lifeline. The one way to get the Terran player to turn around and look away from the fight. Well, unfortunately, it, it died with everything else. The, the shield battery overcharged. We'll keep the Colossus going. And Magpax holds a testament to his incredible blink micro. But three Marauders and untold number of Metavacs here. Oh my. And that's enough to drive the Protoss army back. He's juggling back. The Widow Mine will burrow. I can't. Come on with these Marauders. Eight probes died. Clem? Well, Max Pax isn't dead. But he's still just building. Well, he's got two Colossi. I don't know how he's not dead. Honestly, I really, I really expected. I was kind of winding down. You could hear there. Winding down like, oh no, that Terran army's just too strong. Well, that might be somewhat true, but Max Pax is not. Oh my. The, the charge lots of bunker slapped out in front of him delays their counterattack mildly. But the reinforcements should be enough to push him away. The concussive actually chased a couple on the way out. Some torn hamstrings there. And, you know, everything else eventually. <laughs> but Max Pax still holds. He's got 52 probes. He starts plus two, and Armory is finally completing for Clem, who loves playing on that uh, relatively low upgrade, just full send Terran style. He's got a 40 supply lead. Widowmine will spot and tag the Zealots on the way out. Well, Vikings in production, Ghosts as well. More Colossi. The Marauder count once again growing about as quickly as the Marines. As Clem knows where his biscuit is buttered. Those concussive Marauders, both taking less damage to the Colossi and dealing it out so dramatically. Concussive certainly helping as well. Just kind of, did he spot a prism? Is there a prism? Oh, he spotted a prism with the Widowmine. How convenient. The DTs are trying to get in. Does he know? Well, that was awkward. Another DT in the natural. Scan. Incidental observer. There's another di Where did that DT go? Did he EMP it? That ghost is out of energy and it has a kill, so that tells the story. Where did that prism go? Prism over on the left side where this hydra is hanging out. I have no idea. There's a lot of wildlife here. Disruptor shot. He splits the Red Sea. The disruptors, they do nothing. The Colossi, they crumble. The overcharge is over and out. And the Vikings are hunting down the Dane. What is happening? He's just tearing him apart. Oh my, well, it, uh, Max Pax had a bunch of counterattacks coming through, but he just could not hold the main thrust of the attack, and Clem drives the point home with a relatively comfortable victory. A bit of a shaky game one. He went to that macro stage. Max Pax was able to scrap a victory, but Clem proves why he's the best Terran outside of Korea. The micro just unrivaled, and the macro intimidating. Always seems to have more supply, more units, and more ability. Can I get a scan, Jimmy? Thank you. Um, but what do you think? I think this was a bit more um, educational here. We saw the players with a few more days on the patch, kind of trying to figure it out. Max Packs with a notable lack of mass disruptor. Stargate certainly uh, not looking incredible, whereas Clem mixing in a Cyclone build, but for the most part, uh, sticking with the tried and true m and and m and m Well, we'll see as time goes on, but thank you for watching. I hope I at least made your day a little bit better. If you got the means of motivation, be awesome. You check out Patreon, or at least just like and subscribe. Thank you. 
I'll see you next time. Good luck, have fun. Stay chill. Hell, it's about time.